say to us, fewer of them in number, but they have more services. So, think about what I'm saying now carefully. We look at urban settlements. The larger and more complex a settlement becomes, the more services it, it, more services it offers, but the fewer of them there are. So there will be more hamlets, for example, in the world than there are small villages. There will be more small villages in the world than there are large villages. Okay? So, a small village will have maybe a shop, a church, a post office. A larger village will now have a primary school, or maybe a small supermarket, a health centre, a cafe. And in a small town, we have a library, a clothing shop, shoe shop, bank, restaurant, hotel, notice. As we're moving up the hierarchy, as we're moving up the hierarchy, the number of goods and services offered becomes more, but the number of that type of settlement, the number of that type of settlement is less. Okay. We get the large town and we can work in this sketch our way up to the city. <coughs> Sorry. But we know we know that there are more settlements, those which are the ones were chosen for this particular slide. Huh? If you look at the bottom, lower order services, I don't expect you to remember the examples, but notice there are more of them. Notice the book base. So lower order service centers, very small settlements, but there are many, many of them. Then you get low service centers, notice the numbers become smaller because my graph is narrowing. Minor country towns, country towns such as Uppington, major towns, so what's happening is as well, the number of this type of settlement is becoming less and less. When you get to metropolitan area, there are far fewer metropolitan areas than what there are low order service centers, okay? And then right at the top, your primate metropolitan area is in South Africa, the chair is put here, for conurbation. So there are more low order centers, fewer high order centers, but the position is determined by the number of functions per size. And that is why your primate metropolitan area is not, because it offers the most functions. Okay? <laughs> so, so, um, learners, those learners that are missing around with the mics, please, you are causing a disturbance. Um, we're now going to look at urban hierarchies in more detail. So, what is urban hierarchy? It is the ranking of areas according to the criteria of size, the number of functions, and the degree of specialization of these things, okay? So, we're going to rank urban areas, stedelike gebiede rangskik, volgens die grootte van die gebied, volgens die grootte van die gebied, volgens die hoeveelheid uh, functies wat aangebied word, en ook die decrease specialization, wat speciaal die functies is. Alipetus, could you please speak to your learners? We've wasted enough time today with our technical issues. We don't have time for kids who are messing around. Um, I'd also say it's just like to ask that from tomorrow onwards that you don't have learners sitting individually in front of PCs because it is draining your system. I think that's one of the problems we have Schools that have reported where they're using one computer and connected to a data project and the kids are sitting watching a screen are not having problems. Problems seem to be coming from the schools where you have individual learners sitting in front of individual computers. Everyone is logged into a PC. It's causing problems because they are sending messages in the chat and it's clogging up my screen on the side and they're also accessing the mic and it's causing a disturbance. So please, can we please sort that out? Right. So the three terms that you need to know. You need to know First of all, what the sphere of influence is, what the threshold population is, and what the range is. Those are the three terms that you need to know. I'm sorry I can't open up the slide, but that's one of the problems that we're experiencing now. So, what is the sphere of influence? First of all, you already know what the central place is. It's a town that supplies urban functions to the surrounding rural areas. Right. What is the sphere of influence? It's the area served by a central place. So, the area from which a central place town draws its customs, in other words. Then, we have the term threshold population. You know that already, we spoke about that earlier. That's the number of people 
a function must serve to be profitable. Okay. And in the laws on the right, that's the maximum distance that people are prepared to travel to obtain goods and services. Alright. Now, order functions, you know this already, we just a bit earlier, low order functions, functions or goods you need to buy often like bread, milk, etc. These are less specialized. Threshold population, remember I spoke about the corner store that I visited two, three times a day. So it needs a smaller number of people to be successful. The range is very small. The people visiting the shop on the corner where I live literally come from a two, three block radius around that shop. So that would be the sphere of influence. And the test that therefore is very, very close. Okay? Um, there are many of these types of shops because they need it on a regular basis. And then examples of products and services are bread, milk, petrol, uh, bottle store, doctors, mechanics. And then higher order functions, things that we don't need regularly. These are highly specialized. Here you need a large number of people for your business to be a, of customers for your business to be a success. The range is large, the sea of influence is large, the distance people are prepared to travel is far. Okay? So, for example, when I bought a motor vehicle, I did not buy it in the area that I lived. I bought a motor vehicle in an area that was like something like 60 kilometers away from which I lived, and I didn't mind traveling the distance because it was a purchase that I'm not going to make very often, so the distance doesn't really matter to me. And here, the examples of lounge, which cars, computer hardware, else cars, Specialist doctors, etc. Right. Urban structure and patterns. Now, you know a lot of the story, so let's just have a look here. Here's Paul. Paul has a distinctly, here's a mountain, Paul Mountain. Here's another mountain right here. And Paul literally runs down the middle here. So Paul has a distinctly linear shape. When I look here, this area here has a very angular shape. This area over here uh, has a stellar shape. It goes up in the shape of a star. You can really see that clearly. Now, what's important is patterns. Now, learners, once again, this is something that we can that we can test in the MacBook section as well. Now, you know, your educator has by now looked at three patterns of you. You should be able to identify the three patterns, the three, <coughs> and you should also be able to give the characteristics, advantages and disadvantages of each. Now, let's look at the great angular. It's one of the most common street patterns, especially in older parts of the city. The characteristics are that roads intersect at right angles. Okay? The advantages of this is it's easy to plan, it's very easy to draw lines again. Look at the, your, your blocks are all the same size. Okay? Land is divided easily. It's easy to find your way. You stop your or somebody for directions and say, come go straight this road, turn to the left, da 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 da. The disadvantage, traffic congestion. Every intersection here, every single intersection, needs a traffic uh, either a traffic light or a stop sign. Okay? Let's go to slow traffic down. It's very monotonous, especially if it's a large area that's covered, and it's prone to more accidents because of all the intersections. There are many, many more accidents. The radial or spider's web, very similar to the gridiron, roads radiate outwards from a central point. There's a bit of an easier flow of traffic, but all the roads lead to a central point. So the closer you get to the center, the more congested it's going to be. Lots of traffic jams, slow traffic, wasted space. Then we get the irregular. There's no clear structure that can be planned or unplanned. The advantages are that traffic flow is improved. There are fewer intersections. And the topography is accommodated. Those of you that live in Cape Town will know that if you go, for example, to the Boer Cup and your home estate and you're driving up those roads, you've got those steep roads running up the mountainside. So if you have a grid pattern, Usually when you have a steep slope, your roads will do this. They will wind their way up. But if you have a grid pattern superimposed on a steep slope, 
Their problems is you've got long straight roads going straight up the mountainside. Okay? And it becomes a problem. So but this one here can update the topography because you can adjust the roads to the shape of the relief. It's a difficult plan. It's very easy to get lost. It's not easy to expand or subdivide. So learners, make sure that you know the street patterns. The Afrikaans are the Leerlinger. The start patron. Okay? Make sure that you can identify it, that you can give the characteristics, the advantages and disadvantages. So here, here we can see street patterns is a grid pattern on gentler slopes. It's older. There's an irregular pattern. We normally find them on the steeper slopes here. Your ones are closer together. Here in Wembley, can you see this? <coughs> in the Wembley area, you can see the contour lines closer together. So you will have an irregular pattern. Your grid pattern is usually on the gentler slopes. <coughs> okay. Urban profile. This is a view of the urban area from the side. Okay. Notice taller buildings in the center and as you move away from the center the buildings decrease. Now why does it happen? Because your CBD your CBD <coughs> is the most accessible part of your city and more and more people more and more people want to establish businesses in the CBD and because of that because of that land values in the CBD are extremely high and because the land values are extremely high it becomes difficult to find <coughs> a location in the CBD so what people do they buy a smaller piece of land which is going to cost them less money and build a taller building because then you can get more offices, more space into a tall building than you can into a shorter building but you're using a smaller footprint, a smaller piece of land if you understand what I'm trying to say. <coughs> okay, so why does the height and density of the buildings decrease as you move further away from the city center? Here's the CPD tall buildings and as you move further away your buildings become lower. Why? Land in the CBD is very expensive, the competition for land is very expensive so people buy smaller pieces of land and they rather go up. Out here the land is cheaper and so we can buy wider pieces of land and have fewer buildings lower density. Okay? Here we find more industries, for example, the large pieces of land here you're not going to find industries, more offices. <coughs> okay. Land use zones. We are going to be looking at these land 